So many testimonies that I have. Because now I'm dressing with a suit and with a tie. And not all the time I used to dress like this. Not all the time I, I, I have been where I am today. And now I can tell you I have seen the hand of God in my life. So every time you clap, every time you say glory to God, do it with your heart. So I have come to this place to exalt the name of Jesus. As I told you that yesterday, he came from farther. Think about it. He was a kid and he became poor. And some people offended him. And when they were killing him, some people were, were uh, beating him. Spitting on him. The son of God. God himself was dying. And he was dying for you and for me. He deserves the glory. How many of you love Jesus? Say to him, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. 
is here with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how long I've been talking to uh, Pastor Stephen. But it's been a blessing being in touch with him. The enemy has been uh, uh, putting some uh, uh, rocks in my way to come here. Yeah. But I know what, uh, that when there is a struggle, there is going to be a great blessing. The greater the blessing, the greater the struggle. But I'm here today. And I'm so happy to be here. Proclaiming that Jesus is the Lord. something else is for you, but I can't. Stand up, please. Stand up. I feel so happy. I feel the presence. And I want to share with you a message. And I want you to go with me to Philippians. Chapter 1, verse 6. Receive also greetings from my wife. And uh, I'm, I'm praying to God that they can come with me. Yeah. Let me tell you that uh, when I was younger, one of my dreams was to come to live here in Africa, in one of the countries in Africa. One day, uh, I'm going to pray that one day God allows me to come here for a long time and stay with you for a long time. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. moja sita. And the word of God says thus. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Inasema hivi, nami niliyamini nilo nilo hili. Ya kwamba yeye alianza kazi njema mioyoni mwenu, ataimaliza hata siku ya Kristo Yesu. Amen. 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 Munaweza keti. Today I want to talk to you. Siku ya leo anaenda kuongea nasi about this uh, very message right here. The projects of God. God has some projects. And I believe that God has projects here with you. But the projects of God, they, they, they are so intensive. Paul is writing to this church. He was in prison when he was writing this letter. And the church of Philip, it, 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 was, it was a church that was built and founded in so much struggle. Because Paul was whipped and he was thrown inside a prison. And he and his uh, the, and the person who was helping him. The word of God says in Acts chapter 16 that at midnight they began to sing and to pray. 
siku wa manane walianza kuimba na kumuinua Kristo maybe because they couldn't sleep for the weeps and the blood and the soreness pengine hawangeweza kulala hawangeweza kulala katika hali ile ambayo walikuwa nani so they began to sing sasa wakaanza kuimba i'm gonna tell you something today nataka niwaambie jambo siku ya leo praise god in the middle of a struggle oh mabudu msifu bwana katika dia katikati mwa mwa usiku praise god in the middle of sickness sasa mtumwaambie bwana wakati tuko katikati ya magonjwa don't get tired of praising god usichoke kumwaambu kumsifu kristo praise god every day every time usifu bwana kila siku kila wakati praise god until something happens in your life usukuru bwana kama kitu kikitendeka maishani mwako praise god until you provoke a miracle wakati mujiza unapotokea tangaza hiyo kwa bwana if you praise god ukinapo kumsifu bwana is gonna act on your behalf anaenda kufoku kushika kwa sababu yako ama kwa nafasi yako anaenda kusimama this is what happened in philip hii ndio ilitendeka pale filipi an earthquake came tetemeko hali ulikuja and opened the doors na ukafungua milango the walls began to shake ukuta ukaanza kutikisika And I want to tell you something today. If you praise God with all your heart. Even though you feel sad sometimes. God is going to open prisons spiritually. This power is greater than any obstacle. Every giant is going to come down in this place. Because Jesus is with us. Jesus is with you. So Paul is writing to a church that knows. Kwa kwa hivyo Paulo anaambia anaandikia kanisa analojua. A church that knows how to fight. Kanisa ambalo linajua vile linaweza pigana. A church that knew to continue. Kanisa ambalo linajua kuendelea even when they saw giants in front of them hata wanapoona majitu mbele yao maybe you see many giants in front of you labda unaona majitu mengi mbele yako but you have to remember this lakini nafao kumbuke hili the god almighty is with us yesu mwamba wetu imara ako na sisi the god almighty is with us mungu wetu mkuu ako na sisi hallelujah hallelujah and what that was with daniel hiyo neno moja ninakuambia the one that walk with Elijah mmoja yule aliyetembea na Elija the god of Moses Mungu wa Musa is the god of church Peniel huyo ndiye Mungu wa church ya Peniel alikasoria huyo ndiye Mungu wetu hallelujah hallelujah i never get tired about telling about the story of Moses sijoki kuambia ama kusema kuhusu hadithi ya Musa because there was a project of God in the life of Moses. Kwa sababu kulikuwa na mipango ya Kristo ndani ya maisha ya Musa. I want to tell the story once again. Ninaenda tena kukileta kuleta hii hadithi nikiunganisha tu. The enemy Satan was trying to kill the uh, deliverer that was coming for the Hebrews in Egypt. Mungu alikuwa anapanga kuharibu hii kile kitu ambacho kilikuwa kimelenga yule mji wa Misri. He is Satan is like a hound. He can smell the blessing from far. Shaitani ama shetani yeye anaweza nusa hata kama baraka inakuja. And when he smells the blessing, he tries to stop the blessing. Na wakati anapomnusa hiyo baraka anajaribu kuisimamisha. So he fights for the blessing not to come to your life. Sasa anapigana ili baraka isikuje kwa 
kwa maisha yako. So he was using Pharaoh at that time. Alikuwa anatumia Farao wakati ule. Because Pharaoh was trying to kill every child of the Hebrew people. Kwa sababu huyu Farao alikuwa anajaribu kuua watoto wote wa kiume wa Misri. And at that time he God decided to send Moses. Na wakati huo Mungu akaamua kumtuma Musa. So the mother tried, tried to hide him for three months. Mama yake akajaribu kumficha kwa miezi mitatu. But he couldn't hide him. Like hakuweza kumficha kabisa. So the family put up built a, a, a little ark. Also, jamii yake ikajenga chombo alicho cha kumweka nani? They put the little Moses in the ark. Wakaweka Musa katika ile meli and they let him go in the red the Nile river na wakamwachilia maji iweze kusonga naye ikielekea chini all of you that are mothers here will understand nyinyi wote ambao ni wamama mko na wamama mahali hapa mnaelewa the pain that, that that woman must have felt felt at that time ile uchungu ambao huyu mama aliyokuwa nayo wakati ule maybe she was crying labda alikuwa analia and she she saw when the little Moses went through the river alivyoona Musa akielea kwa maji akielekea chini ya mto probably she was thinking i, I won't see him die labda alikuwa anafikiria atamwona akikufa maybe a crocodile gonna gonna eat him labda wanyo au huyu mnyama anayemamba anaweza akamkula maybe he's gonna drown labda pengine ataogelea but i don't want to see that lakini sitaki kuyaona hayo but let me tell you this lakini wacha niwaambie haya God had plans with Moses Mungu alikuwa na mipango na Musa God had plans with Moses Mungu alikuwa na mipango na Musa and when, when God has a plan with somebody na Mungu akiwa na mipango na mtu there is no demon hakuna mungu mapepo yoyote there is no hell hakuna mungu mapepo yoyote that can stop the blessing Ana, from God anaweza simamisha baraka za Yesu and i can feel it my heart na atakaanza kuishi katika moyo wake god has plans for you in this place mungu ana mipango mizuri katika hali yako god has plans for you mungu ana na mipango kwako oh i have the i have seen this so many times oh nimeona haya kwa muda mrefu sana when god has a calling and a plan for somebody mungu anapokuwa na mwito ndani ya mtu no even cancer can kill him atakaanza peke yake ama saratani haiwezi kamua that person could be Huyo mtu anaweza kuwa kitandani akili akionekana anakufa. If God has plans with that person. Lakini Mungu akiwa na mipango na yule mtu. He rise once again. Atasimama na kuanza kutembea. Because God has plans. Sababu Mungu hako na mipango na yeye. Hallelujah. So think about this. Fikiria kuhusu hilo. Pharaoh was trying to kill the Hebrew people. Farao alikuwa anajaribu kuua watu wa Ibrania. Satan was trying to stop the deliverer. Mungu shetani alikuwa anasimamisha wale ambao walikuwa wanaamini. And this is what God does. Na hivi ndivyo haya ndio Mungu anayotenda. The little Moses when all the way Musa huyu mdogo alianza kuendelea kwa hiyo njia. Where the daughter of Pharaoh was. Where miungu ya Farao ilikuwa and God introduced this little Moses na Mungu akamjulisha huyu Musa to the palace of Pharaoh kwa ile chumba kubwa nyumba ya mfalme think about it fikiria kuhusu hilo the deliverer yule aliye kombolewa was being raised in the house of the person who was trying to kill him alikuwa anakuishwa ama anakuwa kwa yule ile nyumba ambayo mtu alitaka kumuua that only god can do hiyo tu peke yake mungu ndiye anaweza fanya there is no one else who can do that hakuna mtu mwingine anayeweza kutenda hayo the glory today kaibu pewa sifa siku ya leo hallelujah So when, when there is a great blessing kwa hivyo tukiwa hiyo ni baraka iliyokuu sana there is going to be a great struggle kama kuko na baraka kubwa kuna ile kungangana kukubwa sana when i was growing up i never i never understood why wakati nilipokuwa ninakuwa sikuelewa ni kwa nini why did i have to grow up in a place like i grew up kwa nini ninaweza kuwa nimekukua kama hali hapa nilipo why did i did i was why was i 
born in the place where I was born? Why did I have the father that I had? I never understood until I came to the feet of Jesus Christ. Because now I sit back and I understand now. That, that kind of life shaped my character. It prepared me to be strong in life. To stand before demons. And to proclaim without fear that Jesus is the Lord. So, sometimes you don't understand why you go through stuff that you go through. So, wakati mwingine hatuelewi ni kwa nini tunapitia hali tunayoipitia. And you have to remember this. Lakini unastahili kukumbuka hili. The greater the blessing, the greater the struggle. Ukubwa wa miwigo wa 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 kubangu. Wa baraka ni ukubwa wa ku wa masumbuko. I'll say that again. Atasema tena. The greater the blessing, the greater the struggle. Ukubwa wa baraka ni ukubwa wa masumbuko. Don't get sad. Usikuwa na uzuri. Don't get depressed. Usikuwa na maangaiko. Praise God in the middle of sadness. Oh, shukuru wana katika katika tewa wa 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 siku. Praise God in the middle of struggle. Because you have to think what is coming to you. Satan is fighting against you. Because he's trying to stop the blessing to your life. But you have to fight back. Fight back. How do I fight back? Oh, nita pigana aje ni kirudisha ni kurudisha. Praise in the Lord. Oh, kumsi fumwana. That is the way you fight. Hiyo kila chia unta kwa pigana. Praise in the Lord every day. 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 You are in the projects of God. Muko katika mipango ya Kristo. Amen. And that is not easy. Na hivyo sio rahisi. You know the people that don't, doesn't have strong. Unajua wale watu wenye hawana mawimbi. Do you know what are the churches that they, they don't fight? Unajua ni kwa nini hizo makanisa asipigani? Dead churches. Makanisa sao. Dead people. The churches that have struggle are the churches that are alive spiritually. So you have to think about this. Lazima ufikirie kuhusu hilo. There is going to be a lot of struggle. Kutakuwa na mangaiko mengi. But there is going to be a lot of victories. Lakini kutakuwa na ushindi mkubwa. Oh yes, there is going to be a lot of victories. Kutakuwa na ushindi mkubwa. I want to tell you about this person. This person uh, God wanted to use her. Nataka kuambia kuhusu huyu ndugu ama huyu mtu. Mungu alikuwa anataka kumtumia. She she was a, a, a person that was a, a Getting herself into God. Alikuwa mtu mwenye ameanza kumtafuta Kristo. So one day God spoke to her. So siku moja Mungu akamwongelesha. And God told her I want to use you. Mungu akamweleza nataka nikutumie wewe. That I want to use you mightily. Nataka nikutumie na utukufu mkubwa. Saving people that is in witchcraft. Kuokoa wale watu ambao ni wachawi. 
saving people that is so far from me. But I want to use you. If you decide that you want to give your life to me and you want to be used by me, if you decide that, you have, you have to understand this. You're going to lose your profession. So many friends are going to run from you and leave you alone. You are going to have to make many sacrifices even with your family. You're going to have to leave everything behind you and follow me. So you will have to think about this decision. After that, this woman began to pray and pray. Because she was going to take a decision to renounce to everything and give herself to Christ. And the day came and she started crying and she took a decision in her heart. And she said to the Lord, Lord, I don't care if, if I lose everything. I want to give my life to you and use me wherever you want to use me. Do whatever you want to do with my life. And that day she began to see the strength. That is the only person that I know that God has used to save many, many people involved in Greek witchcraft in the United States. She lost everything. Even in her family left her alone. All her friends ran away from her. She paid a price. I'm paying a price today. And you are paying a price as well. Yes. Because if you want to see the glory of God, you have to pay a price. This is not a show. This is not an easy life. This is the gospel. That was a very hard situation that I had to go through. It was a long time ago. We were working to, to, to build the church over there, to found the church over there. 
So I used to sleep in the temple in a, in a, in a room that, that it was on the side of the temple. I had a great fight in the United States. I had a, a, a great storm spiritually going on. So I got sick when I was there. So sick. Nobody was with me, not even pastors, nor I wasn't married yet. And in that moment is where the enemy comes to you. And he starts questioning what you are doing. And he starts saying, there is no reason for you to sing, to pray, and to give glory to God. Look at yourself. So sick, alone. Go back to the United States. Go back to the commodity of the United States. It was so hard for me. Because I wanted to go back. And then I started praying and I went to the altar. And I went to the altar. And at that moment, I took a decision that I was going to stay in that country until I see a church over there. And God gave me the strength to stay. It's been like seven or eight years now. And right now, it's a big church in Honduras. But there is always a price that you have to pay. If Jesus has to have to die, if he had to suffer, me and you are not greater than Jesus. If he suffered, I'm gonna suffer. If they speak him, maybe there, there's gonna be someone that's gonna speak at me. But my house is not in this earth. My house is in heaven. My home is up there. So I'm going to be finishing telling you this. God will complete in your life what, what He started. What I'm going to tell you right now, I believe it with all my heart. You're going to have many churches in Kenya. Many, many, many churches. But you have to keep your feet on the ground. And your heart in heaven. And always, always, always give the glory to God. That's not going to be easy. You will pay a price. A great price. When, when we didn't have any churches. We didn't, didn't have any churches. I, I used to pray, God, give me United States for you. So I saw far. But I saw so many obstacles. But I knew that the one that called me, he was going to be with me every time. And he is with me right now. He is going to be with you. He's going to fight for you. You will see the glory of God. Every corner in Kenya. You 
you have to prepare to pay a price. That this is not easy. The salvation of people is not easy. Satan is not worried about the, the, the meetings that the presidents have. He is not worried about the government. I just trust the enemy war is when the church gather together and praise God. Because the enemy he doesn't fear pies and suits. But there is something that the enemy cannot resist. And that is the glory of the Holy Spirit. But you will see the glory of God. I believe it. I believe it. The pastors, had, uh, they have asked me to tell you once again the story that I told you last time. This is a real story. Every month in El Salvador, the pastors, they, they have a meeting together. So my pastor, he gives a, a teaching. My, my, my pastor is a very humble and simple person. And, and sometimes he, he uses some illustrations so we can understand easily. And, and our mission moves, moves uh, in, in the rural places. They don't have so many means. Awana usafiri wa kufika mahali pale. So the pa our pastor told uh, he told all the pastors. Sasa akawaambia wachungaji wote. He told them. Akawaambia. I want you to pray. Nataka nyinyi muombe. Pray like this. Muombe hivi. Pray God let the mosquito bites the rich people. Naomba Mungu wa waume watu ambao ni matajiri. Let the mosquito bite the rich people. So when they, when they see the bite, they're going to call you to pray for them. And God is going to bless you that way. So one of the pastors, he's telling me this story. So this pastor, uh, he, he, they were building a, a, a church building. They, they only had the walls. They didn't have the, the floor, the roof, or the window. Just the walls. So he, he, he went to the altar and he started praying. Lord, send the mosquito to bite them. And he, he kept that prayer for, for some days. So, uh, one of those days, uh, uh, some people came to the church. They were asking for the pastor to go to pray for someone. And there was a rich, a rich person that had a heart attack. But there was the mosquito. <laughs> so he was in the hospital. So the pastor went there and he prayed for that for that person. And God healed him. So the, the, this guy was very grateful and he said, What do you need? 
Alikuwa anashukuru akauliza mchungaji unahitaji nini? Hey, the pastor says ah, ah, I'm constructing. Am um, mchungaji akasema ah, 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 nina jenga. <laughs> so jengo. so the, the, this person said what do you need? Akamuuliza mchungaji unataka nini? Uh, we need the, the floor, we need the windows, we need the roof. Akamwambia anataka chini kutengenezwe, anataka ukuta, anataka madirisha na anataka pia gari itengenezwe. And he said don't worry, I'm going to give you the roof, all the roof for the church. Na akasema ah usijali mimi naenda kukupatia hiyo dunia tusimpigie bwana Yesu. Yeah, that's not all the story. Hiyo si tu ya dini yote. He still, he still needed the windows, the door and and, and the floor. Alikuwa bado anahitaji madirisha na hata milango. So he he said oh this is this is working. Ah akasema oh kumbe hii umbu inafanya kazi. Father let the mosquito bites the rich hang out and the moon go on and say wacha umbe umbe watu matajiri. And the same guy had a heart attack once again. Na tena huyo mtu tena akashikwa na ugonjwa moyo tena. He went to the hospital once again. Alienda tena hospitali mara nyingine. In the hospital there, there was the son of this person. Katika hospitali alikuwa mtoto wa huyu huyu ndugu tajiri. And and this and this guy said if God if God heal my father I'm going to keep the floor the windows and the door for the church. Na huyu kijana akamwambia mchungaji kama utamponya baba yangu nitapeana milango madirisha na pia gari ya nyumba. Na tena Mungu akamponya mara nyingine. And the church is still there. Na the church. Na kanisa bado liko pale na ni kanisa kubwa. Oh, usipige bwana Yesu na kwamba. The God of America is the God in Kenya too. Mungu oh, ana Home, you will keep that prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Let us yeah. the rich people. Watch out, we will be one of the people.